All right, SP from Skinwalker Outdoors back at you with another Tales of the Serp. This time I've got something kind of interesting and a gas mask you don't hear a lot about. And it's a pretty good gas mask. That's what's sad and it's unknown. Maybe not outside of, of, of Eastern Europe, but it's pretty unknown in America, at least. And Britain, I think, from the YouTubers I've seen. All right, so this is a Bulgarian PG-1. Now, what that means is, this, I believe, was meant to be a backup military mask to the, uh, oh gosh, I cannot think of the name of the designation, but it was the Bulgarian clone of the M17 cheek filter mask, or that, that to technically be correct, the Czech M10. Cheek filter masks are not very good. I'll have some. I'll show you why they're not very good here. Man, a few videos, maybe. Uh... But I think this was a much better design than the cheek filter mask. And I believe Bulgaria still produces this one. But they went to, uh, I believe, the uh, PG-90 is their modern mask. And it's got some features from this, but it also has some features from, like, the British Avon uh, rubber S S10, which is an excellent gas mask. Probably the best in the world. They're very expensive, and the British are very proud of them, which is why I don't own one currently. But... This is the Bulgarian PG-1. A lot of people will claim this gas mask is NATO threaded, 40 millimeter. Mine is not. Newer production from Zebra AD, which is the name of the rubber company that makes these in Bulgaria, possibly are. These are not. The, the older ones that are being sold as surplus, these are definitely not. These are Goss threaded. In fact, this is one of the more intolerant Ghost threaded plastic uh, valve assemblies I've seen. They do not like NATO filters at all. This is a Brit American, I believe it's a C2 filter. I'm not sure. It came with an MCU2P. Uh, there's no markings on it. I, it is a NATO filter though. And without this little adapter I have that's 3D printed uh, that has an O-ring in it, and this one will seal. I've tested it. Uh, this will not take NATO filters. So you have to use Ghost filters. However, the mask itself is decently high quality, despite like how kind of a little rough it looks. Uh, it's got this very pretty blue emitter. And that's a voice emitter. It enhances your voice so you can speak clearly and hear each other in a, like a work environment or a conflict zone, whatever. It's made out of this butol slash latexy feeling rubber. Uh, Probably very chemical resistant, very good. It actually seals to your face pretty well. It has these big eyepieces that remind me a lot of American M17 eyepieces, and that's probably where they got the idea from, but they're crimped and more of the Soviet style. This is what's interesting. This has both the same inlet or outlet valve is before the emitter, and most masks are, it's the opposite. This is like a Chinese feature, which is very interesting. It made it on this, this mask, and it's a very easy way of making the mask louder, I believe. This, this mask is very loud if I talk in it. Uh, it does have an oral nasal or uh, inner mask, so it does not fog up easily. That's a very good design. It has these valves. Of course, you can see how the inner mask works. Excellent, excellent mask. Uh, the harness is this weird fabric, which is kind of ugly. It's got all these sh elastic stretch marks in it. But it does work. It does hold to your head. It's not uncomfortable. It's got this uh, lanyard. You can carry it around your neck. I'm guessing that was for factory workers or whatever. Uh, but yeah, this is the Bulgarian PG-1.